have you spoken to your your buddy Gruden lately? Did you connect oh, with him? I didn't speak to him this week. I've been in touch with him by text probably. I don't know, probably two, three times a week, all the way since before camp opened. Yes, we stay in touch. I mean, as, as you know, with Mooch and, and the guys on the set there, when, when we all work together, if you oh, have yeah. one of those atmospheres where it works well, they're not just your coworkers; they become friends. Oh, yeah. You know, John, John's a friend for life, regardless of what happens. So, uh, yeah, we stay in touch all the time. You know, I, I, I that, and, and it's a perfect way to put it, like uh, friends for life. No doubt about it. And Gruden yeah. is just a great dude to be around. I mean, just an all-timer in terms of well, storytelling and, and good times and whatever. You, and know. you know that. I mean, you, you, you just mentioned you had Fowler on before me. Yep, yep. Chris and I haven't worked together in, you know, four or five years. We, we grabbed dinner in New York City together uh, just, just a month or so ago when he was in for the U.S. Open. I was in for some preseason NFL. I haven't done games with Herb Street in years, but every week we text and talk back and forth. It, that is one of the joys of this job. And it seems like you, Susie, your wife, all of us, we, we all stay friends through this whole process, which is, which is kind of cool. And it does take you to an interesting place when you're watching games because you're, you, know, you're, you care about your friends, but at the same time you're trying to watch a game and go, okay, the Rams are good. Here's why the Rams are good. The Raiders have work to do. Why do the Raiders have work to do? And so you always have to especially when your friends get back in coaching, put some of that aside and deal with the realities of what's going on within their business and with their job at that point. I know. I, and, and, you know, and certainly when it's just amazing how quickly something massive happened on Gruden's watch right. in, in Oakland. I mean, how, how do you think he did grapple with Mac at all? Best you yeah, can I, share and, with us. Yeah. And, no, no, no. And it's funny because we, we didn't talk too much specifically about that because you kind of know what the deal is and what the scenario is for him as this plays out. Uh, John taught me a lot of things. One thing he taught me was fourth quarter pass rush is big. So if there was any way to get that thing to work out, he would have done it in a heartbeat. He would have loved to have done it, I'm sure. Uh, but they've got to deal with their financial realities and they've got to deal with their football. Now, um, is it going to be the best move for them? My guess is no, but I don't know. Uh, no, we saw one game. We have no idea what the two first rounders are going to be. We have no idea. Is this franchise winning now? Are they building for Vegas? What are they doing? So you know, to sit, it, it's, it's the 2018 way of doing sports in the media. You make an immediate bold pronouncement that this was the best or the worst ever, and then you don't come back and get fact-checked on it. You know, it kind of runs like our society. People say stuff, nobody fact checks. Um, that doesn't mean that people aren't right saying this was a bad deal. We don't know. We won't know for a, for a while. I think they got the most they could get out of it. I credit Chicago for rolling the dice because there's a back end to this, too. You know, you're talking about, okay, the Cowboys and building their team around Zeke Elliott and Dak Prescott. What's Chicago going to look like without two ones here going forward over the next couple of years? You get Trubisky in his prime, hopefully in years three, four, five, six, and you're not adding those other pieces. Hopefully for them, they feel like when they got Mac at a young point in his career will equal anything the two ones could have. That, that's why we love sports, because there's a whole bunch of risk thrown out there. I know. I, I do know this. John, John was thrilled to get back into coaching, and um, he hated Tuesday morning. He hated the loss. But I can tell you, behind the scenes, Rich, every time we'd walk out of a stadium, He'd miss the guys who are the coaches doing their winning press conference and even miss the misery of losing because that makes the winning so much sweeter. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure he's still glad to be back no matter what the result was week one. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.